Right, welcome back to Benley Central, I'm going to call it. Uh, there's been a few changes that you might notice. Um, I've put the workbench in this bay, uh, mainly because uh, my cameraman, my son Harry, uh, was moaning that he was getting flare in the window. So uh, I don't mind flares. Um, but so look, flare was coming in the window. Uh, so we put it here and he says that's a whole world better. Also, we've got a new camera. So hopefully uh, you can see me better. Some of the footage we'd shot before this has been a little bit dark, but it was a needs must. We've had the lighting done uh, and now we've moved the bench. So look, there is progress here. Hopefully you can see me a bit better. Um, now, when we left the bike last time, uh, we'd got this wonderful fairing on, uh, my rose-tinted uh, dispatch day's uh, journey I'm on here. Um, and we had a problem that the wing mirror, uh, the right-hand one, was hitting the uh, screen when it was on full uh, right-hand lock, like that, left-hand lock, sorry. Uh, this one was all right. So, um, look, I, I checked up, uh, and I was talking about last time of putting uh, wing mirrors on the fairing, uh, to stop that happening because the, um, the controls were all right. It was just the wing mirror was hitting the screen. Um, but I sat down and thought about it with a cup of tea, like you always do. And I thought, you know what? If I want, I'd have to buy wing mirrors and they'll be quite expensive because I'm doing this on a shoestring, really, um, to keep the wife happy. And um, so uh, I'd have had to buy wing mirrors. And also the right ones, because of the angle they mount, uh, was going to be tricky to find some, actually. So, uh, but not, not purely for that reason. I thought, you know what, I want it how it was back in the day. And they had the standard wing mirrors. Uh, and the Rickman blurb says that this fairing does take the standard mirrors. So I thought, you know what, it's a bodge if I don't do it properly. So um, between uh, then and now, I've actually had this whole fairing off again. Um, and uh, I whipped it down to my mate Jay. Uh, because the problem is the lock stop, which is the thing that stops the bars, it's a lump on the bottom yoke down here and um, a, a tab on the frame, that was damaged. Now, they get damaged when one, when someone tries to steal it or I I in an accident, if the bars get yanked really, round, uh, really hard round uh, when it hits the deck, um, it can snap the tang on the frame. So there was a lump missing off the tang. So I thought... That's a fairly straightforward fix, especially as I've got my mate Jay down the way. He's a really good welder. Um, so I whipped the fairing off uh, at about six o'clock last night, put my head torch on, pushed it in the dark down the road because I've got no headlamp to light the way and I wasn't going to uh, ride it or anything. So I pushed it down the hill into his workshop. And um, let me put my tea down. And um, if you look here, Harry, uh, Here's the lock stop that's on the yoke and there's a tab on the frame there. I don't know if you can see it. So what it was doing is it was turning and now it hits the lock stop and stops there. Well, it was going further. So he's just built that up with a few blobs of weld. Uh, I've yet, to, I've got to paint it. I'll, I'll do that in a little while. I'll just use my raw iron fencing paint because that can go straight on the bare metal. I'll degrease it and just touch it in with a brush just to stop it rusting, really. Um, you can't really see it. Um, so look, now... Uh, I'm so happy, uh, little things please little minds, um, that, look, it doesn't hit the screen. So, and it's as it's meant to be. So, I was just being lazy with it. Well, I wasn't being lazy, I just thought it's an easy fix to put the mirrors on. But now it's as it should be. So, um, that is happy days. I am over the moon about it. Um, but for this session now, really, what we're going to do, I've put the fairing back on, obviously. Um, but while the fairing was off, um, I had a look at the electrics and we're going to start doing the electrics next. I've got to um, do the indicators and all the headlamp wiring and all that. So I'll give you a quick rundown on that um, in a minute. So, yeah, we're ready to do the electrics. While the fairing was off doing the lock stop repair, um, I decided to have another look at the wiring that we'd already done. Uh, and if you remember, we had big block connectors up here, well, in here. Uh, and it, it looked really awful and I thought there's no way Rickman did it so that it was that untidy. So uh, I unplugged it all uh, and I fed this bottom big main wiring loom in the bottom because that's obvious where that had to go. And this cluster that come out the clocks at the top for all the warning lights and, and what have you and switch gear um, from the top of the handlebars. I put that in there and I've managed to connect up the big blocks and everything inside. It's just long enough. Uh, and also, I remounted the horn, which is down here. It was on a cross brace, which meant um, it either fouled this big fat wire at the bottom or it was too low so that when the 
uh, suspension compressed, the mug guard would have clouted the horn. So all I did was remove the cross brace, put an eight mil hole in the horn mount, and I bolted the horn to the bottom yoke. Now I can now swivel it up and down to exactly where I want it. So I've kind of set it, and I've connected the wires for the horn up again on these little bullet connectors. Uh, there we go, that, that light green one is, is one of the horn ones. Uh, and the black one from the horn is inside the shell, and I have put an extension on that. Um, so look, I think that is way neater. There's not big connectors out in the rain. I mean, they can still get a bit wet in there, but not like if they're here. Um, so uh, that's a whole world better than it was. Uh, and then if we come round to the front, um, I have connected up again all the big block connectors. They're not fully exactly where they're going to be because I've still got wiring to do. So what we've got left to do is to mount the indicators uh, and I'll run through that in a minute because there's a few little bits and pieces we have to do to put those indicators on this fairing. Um, and I've got the headlamp shell to go in. And then when that's done, we should be able to reassemble the bike and hopefully, hopefully it's running as well as it was for that first ride out. So yeah, on with the electrics. Right, the next job is to get the indicators on and get them wired. Uh, now look, I'm gonna give you the Guy Willison theory uh, for motorcycle electrics here. And bear in mind, I am not a qualified uh, auto electrician. Um, uh, but I'll explain how I see this, uh, to get this indicator to work. Because uh, the main issue is, we're bolting it onto a fiberglass fairing. Uh, and normally how this indicator works, um, look, you have your battery, uh, you've got the positive lead, uh, which the current flows down. And I always imagine, I know this sounds mad, uh, but I imagine the electricity flowing through the cables uh, a bit like water in a central heating system. So it starts at the battery, uh, it goes up the positive lead into the switch gear. Yeah, you put the switch gear across uh, for your right hand indicator or whatever, that makes the contact, that allows it to travel on. Uh, it then goes via um, the relay that makes it flash. Uh, and then it goes um, up this wire, into the bulb, the bulb's got a filament in it, uh, it goes through the bulb, that causes it to light, and then it comes back out, and then normally, to get back to the battery to make the circuit, this metal indicator is bolted onto a metal thing here, uh, you know, the headlamp mount, uh, and that's earthed, uh, and then it goes back to the negative on the battery via the frame, because the negative on the battery is bolted to the frame, and that completes the circuit. So the problem being with this fiberglass fairing, if you bolt that on and connect that wire, this isn't going to work because uh, the electricity can't get back to the battery negative. So what we've got to do is basically earth this metal stalk. I hope I'm making sense here. An auto electrician will probably contact me going, guy, you're talking rubbish. But this is how I see it. The proof of the pudding will be in the eating. Uh, can I get this working? Um, so what I'm going to do is when I bolt it on, on the inside of the fairing, I'm going to put a big washer on. Uh, that's going to go on, which will earth against the washer. And then this will run inside the headlamp, because inside here uh, are green wires, which on Hondas normally on this vintage, the green wires are the earth wires, which means it's going back to the battery via the frame or however it gets back to the battery. So in theory, if I put an earthing lead on there, connect it inside the headlamp, I'll have a circuit and this should flash. Now this was a working indicator when I took it off, so hopefully when I get this done, uh, it'll still work. So um, what we've got to do is, first of all, don't worry about that one yet. That's going on the inside. Uh, put the wire in there, so that goes in there. Now this fairing is for a Bentley. Look, these are the perfect mounts for these indicators. And also I'd have wanted these on here anyway. So if I put that in there, it's got a recess. Uh, I'm probably gonna block your vision in a minute. Um, so I've got a wire. I've just crimped on um, a, a ring connector which will go on this, on the inside. Um, the other thing I know, I've also had to change the bolt, the original screws that Honda put in them, uh, they're not long enough to go through this fairing and get a nylock nut on and a washer and a connector. So,
bolt's a bit long. Right, now that is bolted on uh, tight. Um, I really like them, they're so classic looking. Uh, so now what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to check my theory. Um, I've got to feed the wires into the headlamp. Um, I think I'm going to put it in the bottom. I could always just unplug these and redo it if I don't like the routing. So there's the black wire. That's got a little blue band on it. Um, that normally means on a Honda, the blue with the blue tab is the right hand indicator. So that's correct. But I also noticed the other one that's on the bench, that's blue as well. So that was originally a right hand indicator. It doesn't matter. They both work the same and they're both identical. Just normally the orange uh, goes to the left and the blue to the right. Um, I know that from building the 1100s I've been building there. They're all the same. I think Honda have been doing it that way for a long time. So hopefully, right, here's the wire I've connected. Oh, now I've gone, I've snagged a load of other wires. I'm trying to keep it simple. Always try and not knot all these together. Um, so there we go. Look, it's way too long at the moment. Uh, so I'm just going to test this now before I crimp that on and just check my theory about my, you know, the way the electricity flows through this. So I'm looking for a light blue connector in here. There it is. Uh, so there's a light blue. Uh, hopefully if I put that in there, uh, this is my earth wire to complete the circuit. Um, and I think if that go, there's a green, uh, these greens, are, they're all earth, so it's a common earth. Uh, so you can connect anything that needs earthing to that. Um, let's just try and get it so it'll go in. Obviously, I'll have a proper bullet on this in a minute. I just want to check it, though. Oh, hang on. Just got to try and make that stay in the uh, connector for a minute. Doesn't matter anything just to get a connection at the moment. Right, there we go. That's connected. So that's what I think is my earth wire. If I turn the ignition on and indicate right, hopefully this will work. There we go, perfect. So that's completed the circuit. So I know I'm doing the right thing. I can now, I know that if I do the same the other side, it'll be exactly the same. Uh, and that goes in the orange one. There's the orange connector there. Uh, so I'm just gonna cut this short, uh, put a bullet connector on and connect that up and check it again. The back's flashing, that's it. So look, that's great. Right, so I'm happy that I've wired it correctly. So now what I've got to do is uh, tidy this up. Um, I'm just trying to see. Uh, this headlamp doesn't move, so you don't want a lot of slack in the back there. So if I do that there, that's roughly the length it's going to come in at the back. So all I'm going to do is take this out of here. And what I've got to do is put this little male connector with the insulator on. That's important, so it can't short out on another wire in there. Uh, so I'll chop this short and then plug this into there. I'll check it again uh, and then we'll go from there. So I'll just show you crimping one of these. Um, I want to cut it, I think. I'm going to give myself a little bit extra. So just cut it off. Here's my wire stripper. Uh, I love these. These are great. You just put it in there. Uh, oh, I've put it in the wrong one. There's different sizes for the wires. So if I go to there. That stripped it. These are they're great. These things. Um, I'm going to cut a bit more off than that, and I'll show you why. What I do here. Uh, you can solder these. I'm not going to bother with this uh, because uh, I'll just do it later if I want to. Uh, but these, it's all in here. I don't think I'll have a problem if I don't. So just twist that until it's nice and tight, uh, and then what I do is I fold it back on itself so it's meatier. Just fold that back on itself. There, so there's the connector, uh, well, the wire that's going to go in the connector. Then you put your sleeve on, and the flat squared off end goes on first. Push that in there. Now, here's the bullet, and th these are quite expensive. Not the bullets, but the these are the correct crimpers for this, and that sits in there. Yeah, sometimes they're a tight fit, these. Um, I just get these from vehicle wiring products. They're great um, and they're really helpful because, as I say, I'm not an expert on electrics. And you just push that in until you see the copper come up to the end 
and, th and then crimp that. And they're pretty sturdy because this has got two sets of jaws. That first one clamps the copper and that clamps the plastic so that uh, when you're disconnecting, you should always hold it by the metal anyway to pull it apart. But that, that I've found these to be really quite robust. Um, the only thing I've noticed is these are for Japanese bikes, but they're a very tight fit in this. That's the male, for obvious reasons. Uh, this is the female, uh, and it goes in there, but I have found these very tight, so I might struggle it. Oh, no, that one's gone in perfectly. Right, so there's the connection made. Uh, it's all insulated. Uh, let me go around and just check that that is still working. Uh, ignition on. There we go. Happy days. So, look, uh, to say boring you, I'm going to do the other side, and then we'll move on to the headlamp, which we will film. So that's basically it in a nutshell. Just put your earth lead on, uh, cut it to length, connect it up, and put the original Honda one into the blue for the right and the orange for the left. So I think that's actually flashing better than it was before. It might have had a bad earth on it before because they're renowned for it on those metal headlamp mounts. Um, so happy days. Right, welcome back to the indicator wiring. Uh, I've bolted this indicator on. Uh, I've got the uh, ring connector on the red wire. Uh, I've crimped a bullet on it with the insulation. Uh, and uh, I put it in and it did work. Uh, however, uh, when it was in, I don't like this like this, these two little thin wires, uh, red and black for the indicators that are going to go in the headlamp. Uh, and it is quite good practice um, to put some shrink wrap on it so that one, it'll be black so it won't stand out, which doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, so I like to do that if I can, uh, uh, as long as this side works okay, I'll take the other one out and put some on that. Um, so shrink wrap is, here it is, is this stuff. Uh, it comes in like meter long lengths or whatever it is, uh, and you get various diameters. Uh, I think this one, hopefully I can get these through. Really, you should put this on before you put your connectors on. Um, uh, I didn't really think it needed it, but having seen it, it would be nice if I can get this on. So let's just see if this will go in. Uh, it's going to be tight, I know that much. Um, so let's get that one in. Just do it. Start that one off. Then get the black one. Just start that off. And then hopefully oh, it does go through. That's good. I could have been in trouble here. Um, so I've cut a piece to length. And you need to leave, obviously, a bit bare either end. Uh, and also, so the connectors might not be dead alongside themselves in the headlamp. So look, there it is, it's come out the end. Put it on, I think about, about there. Uh, that'll do, if I do it there. So then all you do is get a heat gun and you'll see this stuff shrinks right down. Um, and it just protects it and it just looks neater to be honest. So here's, your, here's my heat gun. I'll try, watch you don't melt the wire and get it too hot. So here we go. I don't know if you can see that should start shrinking. There it goes. You need to do it all the way around if you can. It's going to be difficult in this fairing. There we go. Right, let that cool down. And that look, when that's in the headlamp, that looks a whole world neater. Look, it's much nicer than having two little thin wires. So uh, I'm just going to unplug the other side, do that, then we'll connect them up and check they're still working. Right, that's the connectors in. Uh, everything being equal, uh, we should have indicators. So I'll put the ignition on. Um, right hand one and the right hand rear is working. Always check they're the right way around, obviously. Um, uh, and that's happy days. So. Uh, all the wiring's correct. Uh, I'm happy that's properly done. It's all insulated. Uh, so the only thing to do now before we can put the lens in uh, is to sort out the headlamp. So we'll move on to that next. Right, the final thing uh, for the fairing, um, as I said ages ago, it seems like ages ago now, um, you know, the original headlamp uh, was a lot smaller. And when I hassled the guy for the fairing mounts, I also has him and he sent this headlamp shell, which it fills the hole nicely. It's the correct one. You look, it's a good fit in there. The other one was tiny. Um, so uh, anyway, he sent me this headlamp shell and this headlamp. Uh, the problem I've got is that the original 
uh, on this bike is six volt and this had a halogen H4 bulb. So I did a bit of research and I found a six volt bulb that goes in this fitting. Uh, um, and it's called, believe it or not, a P45 bulb. <laughs> so um, I've had experience of those. Um, so anyway, look, there's his headlamp shell. Um, I bought a bulb for it. Obviously, the connector, this is a spare that came with the bike, actually. This is an original six volt headlamp bulb holder. That won't go in here. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off. I need the pilot light. That fits in there. Uh, I've got to take the bulb out the old light. I haven't got another six volt pilot lamp, but I'll take that out the other headlamp shell. So what I'm going to do, oh, it won't come out, uh, is cut off that green wire. Uh, and there's the clue, it's green, it goes to earth. So I'll put that in one of these greens here. Um, and uh, also this red is an earth. I'm not sure which one of these. One of these is high beam and one's low beam. So it's the same principle with my electrics. Uh, the current uh, comes in, say on this one, whichever that one is, I think that's low beam, although I'm not sure I'll find out. Uh, it goes in there, round the filament, lights the bulb and comes back out on that red. So that red's got to go to a green uh, in the headlamp and that green's got to go to a green. Um, so I'm probably going to have to join those two together and put a single bullet on because I've only got one space left um, because the other indicators were uh, earthed on the frame, you know, on the headlamp mounts. So uh, basically there's a bit of skullduggery going on. I'll cut that off. I'll put some connectors on here. We'll connect it up. And luckily both of these are just uh, male bullets going on here. And if they're the wrong way around, I can just unplug it and swap it. So if I put it on main beam and it's not, um, I'll just have to swap the blue and the yellow round. Um, so that's that in a nutshell. So uh, I'm just going to have to get the cutters out and wire strippers uh, and get some bullets on this uh, and see how we go. Right, I'm just putting the bolts in that hold the headlamp rim on. Uh, we haven't been filming it because it's been really fiddly. It's taken me ages, uh, but they're in. Um, so we'll just check it. Um, so parking lamp, yes. Headlamp, yes, uh, that's dip, that's main beam and the high beam warning lights working. Uh, just turn the lights off, check the indicators. That's perfect. Right, we've got the fairing back on. Happy days with the lock stop fixed. The mirror doesn't hit the screen. Uh, the lights appear to be working, so that's great. The indicators are working. Uh, it's really rigidly mounted, so look, I'm very happy with all that. And um, really, I want to just start getting it ready, uh, put the tank back on. Um, however, when I took the tank off to get this fairing off again, oh, it was a pig to get off because it's got these fairing mounting brackets underneath the rubbers, which has moved them out. And that was so tight on the tank. And I think that might be stressing the tank a bit. So uh, in my little pot of bits that arrived with the bike, I knew there were some rubbers in there. So I've had a look through and there are two tank mounting rubbers. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to whizzy wheel these down thinner so that they sit further in. So I don't know if you can see this. Uh, I've, I've just ground this one down. Uh, look, I've knocked about, I don't know, three mil off it. I can go a bit more and there's a nice recess on the back to see how deep you've gone. Look, that's how it was and that's how that one is now. So that's how much I've taken off. Um, I'll do uh, another one for the other side the same to keep the tank in the centre. Uh, and then I'll try and put the tank on and see if it's any easier. So the way I'm going to do it is um, just get a bit of masking tape. I've got to put my glasses on. I'm blind as a bat without them. Um, it doesn't have to be too accurate. I just want a guide for when I'm whizzy wheeling it down. Uh, I'm just guessing roughly the same as the other side. It doesn't have to be millimetre perfect because th they, they squash down a bit anyway. Uh, let's just see if I can get the tank so it's not so tightly on there. So look, I'm just putting that a few mil in from the edge. I'll try and keep it equal all round. Uh, there we go, that's that. Break that, squash that down, and then I'll put this in the vise, uh, and I'll just um, just grind that down a bit. So if I go over here, um, as I say, I've already done one. Now you can see, look, this is all the rubber off it there. Um, just clamp it there. You don't have to squeeze it hard because I'm only pushing down. 
Uh, it might fly out, but hopefully not. So I'm just going to take this down all the way around. I'm glad I had spare ones of these so that I've still got the originals. If ever I convert it back without the fairing on, I've got the correct ones. Let's compare that to the other one I've already done. Let's see, it's what you're going to look at as well. They've got a recess in the middle. I've ground that one down slightly further than the other, but I think that's near enough. That micron won't make any difference to... Uh, I hope it's enough off them. So take that one off and you can see that's kind of just the thickness really of these metal bars. But they are quite thick so I may need to go a fraction more. Where's my petrol tank? That's over there. I will grease them before I put the tank on. I'm not going to now in case I've got to grind more off. If there's grease all over them when I try and grind them, it would be really horrible. Oh, that's fine because that's not greased. And when that is, that's way better than it was before. I really, once I put the brackets on, I really had to shove it. So, um, so that'll do for the time being. I think that's more or less perfect. I'm happy with that. It was way too tight on the tank. I was just worried it was going to force it apart. Um, let's put that on. I need to take the side panel off to get the fuel line on. Right, that's the fixing rubber on. That's the, oh, I'm really happy with that. That was a tight fit before. Put the side panel back on. There we go. That's that. I'm not going to put the seat on now. Uh, in a little while, I'll um, try and fire it up. And then if it fires up okay, I am going to change the plug caps and stuff. So that'll be the next thing. But... I think that looks great with the fairing on, if you like that kind of thing. I'm sure some people hate it and preferred it without the fairing. But for nipping to the shops and stuff in poor weather, that's going to be great. And I am hoping to do some weekend trips away on it as well. So roll on the summer.